Good evening, India. Welcome to today's show of Perspective with Amritan Shubhashpi. And today I have a very special guest with us in today's evening show, uh, Dr. Bharat Adur, the director, Akash Ganga Center for Astronomy, Mumbai. Dr. Adur has been a persona to have been followed by millions of astronomy lovers, astronomy enthusiasts, and he is still being followed by a lot of professional as well as amateur astronomers. Throughout his career, spanning over four decades, he has done an exemplary service to the pursuit of the development of astronomy. And we are very much delighted to have Dr. Adur with us today on the occasion of International Asteroid Day. So first of all, welcome Dr. Bharat sir. And on behalf of the entire fraternity of amateur astronomers, I wish you a very happy International Asteroid Day. Welcome sir. Hi. Thank you, uh, Amrita Anishwaji. Uh, I am really delighted to come back today again, but the topic is on meteorites and uh, meteorites is one subject which has been fascinating us from at least from my childhood because always we used to wonder how these uh, meteorites come onto the surface of earth and further how they can be found. So it has been more or less a childhood pursuit to hold a meteorite in hand. And uh, this pursuit could only be uh, achieved with a fresh meteorite which fell in 2003 uh, in Odisha in India. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Bharat sir. So, uh, if you uh, give us your due permission, can we begin the question and answer session for the day? Yes, why not? So, let me begin with you. The hot topic, as you have already opened up the discussion for the day, that is, sir, can you kindly tell us about this entire concept of international asteroid? Over to you, sir. Yeah, the objective of this uh, international asteroid day has been primarily to make our people aware of that there are uh, rocks coming from outside our earth and moon distance and falling onto the surface of earth, thereby forming very large impact craters. And these craters are spread all over the, uh, all over the earth. And why they are falling, the first question arises is when there is a falling star, uh, one tends to see the falling star uh, from the sky, in a dark sky, you can see stars falling towards us. But normally all these meteors, these are called as meteors, and these meteors are coming from very far off places and uh, they, they are there in the sky for a very short while, maybe for one second, three seconds. Maximum that one we have seen is around seven seconds. But beyond that, it was not possible to be seen because they were fairly low. So this has been uh, our experience in observing stars falling from the sky, which are called in India as Ulka, and when they fall down, they are called as Ulka Path or Meteor Shower. Now, meteors fall from January to December, and from India, where it starts to fall from, the area here is the constellation. The originating of the constellation is prime most important. From which part of the sky that uh, meteor is coming and this was one of the aims at AGCA which we have been following, following it from 98 or maybe earlier than 98 also to look for meteors falling from the sky. The observations were pure naked eye astronomy, which means what you can see 
when the uh, sky is clear, how these people come down, and this was attributed to meteor shower. But uh, there is a lot of discipline which is involved for naked eye astronomy. It's not necessary that one must have a binocular, one must have a telescope, or one must have advanced and things like that. Even a schoolboy can see meteor showers, and this has been happening with us for quite some time. And here we have involved children right from the age of 10 and above. And they were also they were fascinated by such uh, falling uh, stars. They, we were telling them that they are falling stars, but they are meteors. Besides that, one more important thing that we have to do is we needed charts. So what we had done for the children was to make back-to-back -back sitting arrangement where they can slightly incline and can see the sky in the north, in the east, in the west, and in the south. And the children were made after every hour to move their positions. But the insistence was on the star map. And the star map on which they can only use a pencil and make from which star that uh, meteor has come and up to where it has come. This was a part of uh, children's astronomy or children's meteor observation. Further, this observation slowly went to uh, using a camera, which means earlier the cameras had films and people they were able to set their cameras, positioning that to different parts of the sky, they would record it. Now, recording here was to keep the camera on for quite some time, maybe even a half an hour, and then stop, and again start the camera, again half an hour. Like that, the camera, the photographs were taken. Finally, the uh, meteor observation has advanced fairly large and here we feel that the younger people can do tremendously large. So uh, I hope Amrutanshu, uh, you are satisfied with my answer for meteors. Thanks a lot, uh, Bharat sir. Uh, I, uh, you can say, uh, shower all kinds of praises on behalf of the amateur astronomy lovers for taking us or giving us a deep insight into this astonishing world of meteors, asteroids, meteorites and all. So, uh, as I can see your presenting screen that we have written, meteorites are the poor man's space probe. So, I would request you to kindly explain your perspective over uh, this title line or the tagline that you have put for us on yeah. this all important occasion of the asteroid day yeah. regarding how they are the four men with growth with due terminology of meteor, meteorite, and meteorite. So, over to you for your perspective on meteorite. Yeah. Uh, the first important thing I have to get it clear for you that when you see a falling star, that is a meteor. And when you find many of them falling at the same time, it is called as a meteor shower. And after that, if by chance a meteorite does, or rather a meteor comes and hits the earth, then it is called as a meteorite. To get uh, such meteorites onto the earth, the question is, where do these meteorites come from? And the answer is, the meteorites come from very far off region, that is beyond, sometimes beyond Mars also. Because beyond Mars, we have an asteroid in belt. 
So I will show you the next slide. This is the asteroidal belt which you see, which is beyond Mars and it is between Jupiter. Now this asteroidal belt, actually many uh, astronomers also earlier used to believe that there was a possibility of another planet coming up, but that did not happen and it remained as a debris in the uh, solar system and hence they were called as asteroidal belt. Now, when you see the asteroidal belt, there are many questions which come up. One of the questions which uh, we have to really understand is our moon also from this asteroidal belt which the earth captured and kept it to itself? The next question that you can think of is and remember moon is a satellite of our earth which means the moon goes around the earth and similarly Mars has two moons Phobos and Deimos. Now did Mars also capture one of the asteroid and kept him in its orbit? Think about it. And these questions are even open today for one to study how these meteors can be or how these asteroids can be. And here the asteroid belt here basically as I told earlier that planet which failed to form have been formed as debris in our solar system. Earlier the understanding was that these debris are around uh, that is beyond Mars and it is between Jupiter. So you may also wonder how did we send spacecrafts to Jupiter and Saturn? And remember, for sending a spacecraft also, you had to overcome the asteroidal belt. It is not a simple going from Earth to uh, Jupiter or Earth to Mars. Earth to Mars is possible, but Earth to Jupiter has greatest problem of asteroids. If one of the asteroids come and hit the spacecraft, then it will never come out of the asteroidal belt and it will be destroyed. However, the first Voyager 1, Pioneer 1, these were the spacecraft which maneuvered to come out of the asteroidal belt and then they went to Jupiter they went to Saturn and then they went further. So, uh, all these spacecrafts have the greatest danger of encountering the asteroidal belt. So, don't be under the impression as we are on Earth, we are safe. Why? We have an atmosphere and this atmosphere causes friction. Now, all of you people must have seen how uh, when you come down from the space also, how Kalpana Chawla, our own astronaut, got killed was mainly because of atmospheric friction is so strong that anything which is coming out of the space towards the earth, it does not let it come so easily. So, what happens is, whatever that, even if it is an asteroid, it starts burning and in the burning process it gives out light and this light is an indicator for young amateur astronomers to see the color of the meteors. The color of the meteor tells you what basic element may be there in that meteor and it could be aluminium, it could be magnesium, if it is yellow, golden yellow, it could be sodium. In similar way, if we look at different colors of these meteors, 
you are able to say what elements were there in that asteroid which started coming towards the earth now all uh, these meteors uh, most of the meteors get burnt in the atmosphere if they are very large then there is a possibility of it coming towards the earth but the initial friction and heating of these meteors is so strong that many of them fail to reach even the earth and this is a regular phenomena of a day to day phenomena on the surface of earth some particles of these asteroids do come to the earth and that's how we one has to prepare what kind of preparation that is required to see for such asteroids which are coming near the earth which are going near mars which are going near venus but again venus has also an atmosphere so again the chances of uh, these asteroids getting into venus orbit is absolutely difficult so but in case of mars also it has atmosphere but one does not know whether these phobos and deimos they are not like our moon they are not spherical they are like a, a cigar they appear to be like cigar and the other one deimos looks not like a cigar but it looks like a broken rock so such things are again seen now the question arises if one is able to overcome the asteroidal belt and come to jupiter then the question arises has jupiter we have seen four moons isn't it does jupiter also do the same thing as what earth has done capturing the asteroids and thereby the number of uh, satellites for jupiter is growing earlier the number was around 635 to 60 and then it is now beyond 60 so the number keeps adding in case of jupiter similarly one would like to know yeah jupiter does have a very strong uh, force which tries to hold this and put it around its orbit so earlier people thought jupiter has only satellites but later it was found that jupiter also has a ring like structure and this ring like structure is captured asteroids or whether it is an outburst of some jupiter material and it is captured there yeah these are open questions so can we move to the next slide yeah this is an asteroid called eros and one of the space craft actually went very near this asteroid and you can see the diameter is roughly 31 kilometers is the longest and why it was known as near earth asteroid because one wanted to see how asteroids are formed it's not so easy to form an earth like structure but you can just see an asteroid orbiting around the earth and how the spacecraft landed there and yes it did give us a lot of images and a lot of pictures now this is something which one needs to look at when these meteorites come from the sky they are called as heavenly eye and this was found as an hieroglyph from the egyptian pyramids so you can well imagine it's not that meteors were not known to ancient people i when i say ancient means the earlier civilization egyptian and phoenician and of course indians uh, then the chinese everybody had seen stars falling and they had tried to 
make such even uh, symbols in their uh, temples or maybe even pyramids you may find such hieroglyphics now here i am just showing you how, what all information is still available of meteorites which has fallen on earth now this is a meteorite which has fallen in 1492 in i got a can only say alashia loran i cannot spell the earlier word but you can see that and when that meteor fell how was it preserved as the oldest meteor and how do we know about the age of the meteor again as we proceed further i will be able to tell you something about it but this is how the first recorded information photograph or painting and this is the meteor which you are seeing which fell or somewhere in the ground here and was then picked up by hand in those days people had no other means to pick up if they were very big yes they had to use bigger tongs and things like that but otherwise they had to be either taken into a horse cart uh, holding that meteor the meteor the same information about the same uh, meteorite is there in this particular meteorite now here i want to show you the same meteorite which is now preserved in a planetarium or it is in some science center so one of the objectives which one can really do is the uh, would be to uh have meteorites also inside a planetarium inside a science museum so people can actually come and feel that asteroid how it is you can literally hold a uh, meteorite in hand but let me tell you these are very old objects they are as old as our earth okay so this is how one learns about meteorites and how they are preserved now there is a knife here i am particularly interested that these were iron meteorites which have fallen and in india during the jangir era there was one meteorite which has fallen somewhere around lahore in those days it was an integrated india and lahore was uh part of that uh, indian continent then during jahangir's period and this later was given to uh, jahangir the king of the mogal king as a sword and a knife even today one can go to delhi museum and see this kind of a knife which was from the Jah jahangir's time which was made into as a knife and later they were also made as swords now this is one interesting thing that how in those times also meteoritic iron was used to manufacture swords and knives now here i have to show you sheldon uh, an astronomer uh, who talked about how meteorites fall what kind of minerals do they have this is the kind of uh, and meteorites have been named after him also sheldonites are what he had talked about uh, meteorites which have fallen and these fallen meteorites have been looked for what type of elements are there inside that uh, and they were found to be having sodium calcium magnesium phosphates like that and this particular thing he are named after him now here i have just given you the definition what is a meteorite an object which is a molecule asteroid traveling in space earlier before they are from asteroid they become meteorite when they come 
fairly close to a planet we call them as meteorites but then when they enter the earth's atmosphere the light phenomena happens and then they come down as shooting stars or falling stars to the earth's atmosphere hence we call them as meteors meteorites one meteorite i have just shown you and then in these meteorites which fall on the earth or any other planet even if they fall on moon they fall on mars they fall anywhere and everywhere so there is no such border line that they will only fall on earth they can fall even on moon and on the craters which you see on the moon are basically because of these meteorites which have fallen on the moon and have formed craters now after they have fallen why do we call it as meteorite fall once the meteorite is fallen what people have is different cultures have different objectives of what to call them and normally the name is given of the place where the meteorite has fallen in india this recording was done by geological survey of india and even today the meteorites have to be deposited with geological survey of india <laughs> and meteorite uh, find is a recovered meteorite with the record of its fall is called as a meteorite find now the meteorite names is a funny nomenclature i will tell you sometime later why it is normally it is given to a place where you pick up now what happens suppose if there is a very large meteorite like shelbinsky yesterday you must have heard it fell in russia and it damaged couple of buildings it fell inside a classroom glasses were broken the part of the building was broken so when they come closer to earth they create this kind of effects and where it has fallen that name is given but if that meteorite has a burst in the atmosphere itself and the particles of that meteorite are spread over a very large area like uh, 20000 square kilometers 30000 square kilometers how will you call it a meteorite by any name it needs then that area or that region's name to be associated with that meteorite okay so we go further and this is today one of the best places to find meteorites what am i saying antarctica now finding such meteorites on land probably must find the difficult but there are ways that means how to recover the meteorites after they have fallen on earth okay there are methods but when you are in antarctica you have the whole plain as an icy plain and these meteorites which fall there are not white in color but they are brown they are black they are they appear in different colors hence recovering over there in antarctica has become more simpler i am looking for our youngsters to try to look for uh, meteorites because uh, in antarctica also we have an indian base where one can make proposals to institutes and they will be too happy to have young children young people going to antarctica but going to antarctica is difficult for one simple reason you are stranded in antarctica for at least minimum of 3 to 6 months so but you have an objective to do there that you can find 
such meteorites which are called as antarctica meteorites and such groups are essential for meteor observers like us here in this country now this is how many groups like the americans the russians everybody has a camp on antarctica and when they find a meteorite they put a small flag there do you see the flag where the meteor they have found this is the meteorite they have found like that they collect so it's a beautiful picture of a penguin looking at a falling star and this kind of a mission is really interesting and one can do a lot of work this people have done it in 92 and 93 i look forward for youngsters or young people from india to do a similar exercise maybe in 21 22 or 21 to 23 whatever is the period when they are there at antarctica one of the search can be for meteorites now i am not showing you uh, all this is how see you are seeing your meteorites straight on to the surface one is here very close to the uh, helicopter and there is one more here so these are the kind of uh, meteorites being picked up in antarctica i am not going to show you how the flow of ice is over there and all but you can imagine that a small meteorite also can be found at the very top level and they are called as meteorite falls and they also are depending on the movement of ice because everywhere here you find ice and very at the bottom of the ice is a bedrock so sometimes they due to the ice movement which is uh, they start drifting towards some uh, rocky objects and get concentrated there now this is one meteorite which is so large it weighs nearly 60 tons and this is found in a place called as hoba in south africa and it is one of the largest iron meteorites found in 1920 so you can just imagine uh, this is the same meteorite maybe few years back people have gone and tried to see that so they have not taken it to any uh, museum or even in any observatory or even in a science planetarium because it's so big <laughs> one needs to go towards the place to see such large meteorites the same meteorite but again the new groups going and watching it but one interesting thing that they have done is to preserve that meteorite so very carefully putting that people can sit around this meteorite and see it feel it and then you can even probably sit on it also because but you don't do all those things you can see that kind of a meteorite there such a large piece later you do find such large meteorite in greenland that is the north of our equator we have uh, the place near cape york in greenland which was 31 tons and today they uh, this whole meteorite was shipped from greenland to american museum of natural history i have seen this meteorite in the uh, natural history museum and there you can really go around it It's such a huge meteorite you are able to see now the same meteorite how was it transported from the place where it fell to the ship and from the ship it was taken to india so you can well imagine how such materials can go from one place to another now this is one in australia 
which is again a very big mundra bila is in australia which weighs around 22 tons of this meteorite but it doesn't look like a stony meteorite it looks like a lot of chondrules but again i don't want to get into how they are classified and all we can talk about it at some other point this one had fallen in again in us in oregon where it is about 4.2 tons and children can actually go into the crevices inside that particular meteorite and you will see them here uh, how they are trying to pose themselves within a meteorite mexico they found around 11 tons and the last which we have a record of a meteorite which fell in chile in china now this was supposed to be a very large meteorite uh, i have some pictures of that it was about 1.7 tons and it had made a very large crater now that crater is also preserved and it is now known that it was an ordinary chondrite so they get classified further after it is analyzed so one need not say that it falls here in antarctica and greenland and here it falls all over the world all over the earth and then our objective one objective should be how to recover such meteorites and how to learn about meteorites in more knowledgeable way or more scientific way today there are lot of newer technologies available so by using them how a meteorite is there now this is the one in kansas again in us but this meteorite i don't want to go show you so many i will quickly show you some meteorites uh and then how it has fallen in houses and some persons uh, body also such meteorites have fallen in 54 it came all the way from the roof and hit the ceiling and through the ceiling uh, a woman was injured a car was damaged and how that meteorite was now again i am going back to another uh uh thank uh, you yes sir i'm going to the next uh, ppt sure sir sure so uh, here you will see uh, that beyond asteroids there are comets now let me tell you asteroids or such asteroids go into orbit of different planets also thereby they form a ring and again here i want to quickly go through many slides uh, i don't want to go into planet debate and all that but i can i want to tell you very precisely that even in our mars you have mars asteroid that means there are mars asteroids some come out of it and again they uh, go back into the mars uh, orbit and such martian or uh, uh, meteors which are called as and then there are also jupiter in uh, asteroids which come sometimes closer to earth and then they go back so in near earth asteroids it is little to uh interesting to know whether it's a mars or whether it is a jupiter or whether there are such asteroidal belts beyond in besides the asteroid belt we have is there any different markings in that and this is what i want to show you here i'm not going into all these definitions i'm just going to tell you about how this happens 
I have shown you two asteroid photographed by spacecraft, Gaspara, Ida, Matilda, and Eros. Now, these naming also I have told you how they are. But again, you know, one needs to revise them periodically. You can't hold on to the same norms because today the technology has also moved so fast that one needs to upgrade the uh, understanding of meteors to a higher order. Now, as this one is taken by very interesting yesterday, one had probably uh, heard about Keck telescopes and how on the uh, Vesta landed on Earth as a meteorite. But again, I'm not going to talk about where, what kind of, whether it is a chondrite, there are different sub-classification for that. But we can see how the near Earth have orbited, even Eros. Now, one comment I have to make here, which probably I heard it yesterday, asteroids, again, have to be looked upon as a natural object in the space. Yesterday, we were hearing about asteroid mining. Yes, these are the topics which come about in space, aerospace, in subjects like that. But we must also protect these asteroids. If they are far away from us, there is no reason to plow them back to the earth and then start mining, which shows that the human tendencies to abstract or rather extract many, many so resources for its own capital funding. And here I want to particularly mention about near Earth asteroid. This is my personal comment. So you can hear, I'm not going to show you those quick time uh, objects, but you can definitely see. So now the question arises, is there a belt for Jupiter also? Or whether there are asteroids attracted in Jupiter's orbit? And the answer is yes. There are some cometary debris which one sees it during uh, some of the uh, meteor showers. These are the things which one should be really careful about. And these are known as Trojan asteroids, which are captivated by the Jupiter's orbit. And they do come uh, into the Earth's orbit also sometimes, but one needs to analyze them very carefully. So again, we go from asteroidal belts are there for even Jupiter, which appears to be now like a ring and then one can go on. I had also shown you how asteroidal belts are there. Now, what one can see here is these kind of belts, which are called as trojans. Over here, you can see here, you can see one. And there are some here nearby ones. But these are the primary trojans, uh, which asteroid, which are there, we do sometimes come towards the Earth's orbit. And we go further. So the trojans now are classified. And the diagrams I don't want to go into that they are only at a 60 degrees from this. So there are certain very interesting phenomena. In our next talk, we can probably talk about it. But the asteroid belt, you will see something very interesting between Mars and Jupiter. Our asteroid belts also have some gaps within them. And that gaps do happen just after Mars over here. And these are the number of asteroids which are there. And this is an 
Res orbital resonance order, number of asteroids you see are peaking beyond 1000, 1500 and so on. But what I am going to tell you is these gaps are very, very useful for our spacecraft when they have to maneuver to go out of the asteroid belt and then reach Jupiter. So you will see these kind of gaps within our asteroid belt also. And there are larger uh, things which are between 2 and uh, 3.5, 3.6 around that distances. And the periods which you will see here is one year, two year periods are also there. So you can actually see how the, these belts also move around the sun. So it is very interesting to study uh, asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter also. Again, uh, I want to ask our citizen scientists, amateur astronomers, to now get into this class of observation. Now here you will see orbital period of asteroid and the orbital period of Jupiter. So you can well associate that these asteroidal belts also keeps moving around. And uh, you can see further how the asteroid belts uh, are spaced out in the solar system. And you will wonder that these gaps were found by a scientist called as Kirkwood gaps. Now, these gaps which are there in the asteroidal belt are known as Kirkwood gaps and they go all the way up to 2.1 astronomical unit or between the sun and earth distance. So you can well find out that the orbital resonances, now here there is a, another word which is used for how they are orbiting around the earth and what are the orbital speeds. So you can really try to find out how these gaps, how they operate and how the spacecraft has to do the maneuvering of these asteroid belts and get out of the asteroid belts. Similarly, such belts are there even beyond Jupiter. You may wonder, how is it uh, that they are beyond Jupiter? So in here, I, we have given some explanation. Orbital, when, uh, whenever one object, orbital period is simply ratio of another object's orbital period. So one can really find out how these individual asteroids are behaving in these uh, prior to the Kirkwood's gaps, whereby you can find that there is a, another term which you can start looking for. <coughs> Sorry. So this is one of the examples of how a small push can give a pendulum uh, some energy for the pendulum to give a swing. Similar swings one can see with the natural asteroids also. Uh, again here, uh, you may wonder that the asteroid belt has a total mass compared to that 5 into 10 raised to minus 4 and mass of the earth so many times less in there. But yes, it does cause anxiety for a satellite to go out of uh, asteroidal belt. And people now have done fairly good amount of work and they have found that it is possible to this kind of observation. And now there is a hope to look for 100,000 asteroids larger than one kilometer and there are some asteroids can be as large as 10 kilometers also, which can be devastating if it hits the earth. So you can just imagine from this that 
uh, looking at the asteroids and the same several million kilometers where they are and if any asteroid would have to come within our naked eye they are fairly faint they are not very bright these asteroids are not very bright very few of them palas is there ceras is there these are some asteroids which can be looked by the telescope by the binoculars and like that in small telescopes but the larger asteroids if you want to see again in asteroids also one needs to be very careful what kind of asteroid are you going to look for and whether it has a good magnitude because the asteroids which are far off they are in the order of beyond the faintest star for the naked eye which is around 5.5 or 6 magnitude these are beyond 6 which means they are as far as 70 magnitude so they are very faint in observation and thankfully today you have good ccd cameras and in ccd cameras with dslr uh, that means your cameras you can uh, do such kind of studies it's not any more only for the telescope one can look for certain asteroids by using smaller cameras also yeah you have to if you can have a telescope very good but one needs to have a good observing ccd camera so we move further and how they are detected yesterday must some of you must have seen Prevera's uh, talk. She was showing that she was blinking two images, and in blinking two images, such uh, trails are looked at, and from that you can find out how many seconds of that particular uh, meteor was in the sky, and like that you can find it probably. on various uh, ways and uh, the methods i am not going too much into the details but on an average one must see the two groups such as the rotation rates and that means the spin periods and all that it's little too more technical i am not going to deal much on that but what you can see in that that these asteroids have a reflectance that means they normally reflect only the sun's light some of them don't reflect so much so they can be carbon if it has medium reflectance we call it metallic and if it has high reflectance we call it as silicate but meteorites hitting earth have the same categories that means when they come and hit they are there they don't bother but these are the brightnesses or how bright you can see them in the sky these are from the uh, colors of the object the meteors which come to the earth's object also you may have seen that they come in such a large number so we come very fast further yeah here i want to say one line It is beyond Pluto also. There is an asteroid belt, which is called as a Kuiper belt, and from Kuiper belt, comet-like objects do come into uh, uh, our solar system, or rather, come towards the sun. And these comets, one has been able to see uh, fairly well. So there is also a, a Kuiper belt as Kuiper asteroid belt is also there beyond Pluto. So I am not going to uh, tell you about what are NASA missions and the Hubble's view. Hubble has uh, found more than two satellites for Pluto and its moons. They are called as Shano, Nix, and Hydra. Maybe in near future. one may see more uh, such kind of objects so such things 
are very interesting to look at and i'm not going to go into the uh, particularly go into what is a planet why decisions i cannot be but this is one of the comets which i wanted to share with you what are comets like they have a strong nucleus which is also very very strong nucleus which is rotating on its axis and it leaves two tails normally two tails in some comets one is able to see nearly 20 tails also 20 21 tails and that is how you are able to look for a comet and studies of comet is also very interesting where any common citizen amateur astronomer a school going child can look for comets i'm not going into the details of uh, sun grazing comet because some comets go and uh, like there was a comet called as hail bob some years back which went and crashed on the surface of sun or rather got evaporated as it went closer to the sun thereby uh, many comets do not go around the sun they can go and crash on the surface of the sun this is how a comets close up has been seen for some comets the material uh, has been also found that they are also fairly like asteroid but they have they are more gaseous in content so they are known as dirty snowballs and that snowball can be very large 5000 km kilometers apart and when you see the actual head of the comet is very small about 1 km but you don't know what all it brings from kuiper's belt to earth and the sun uh, this was the deep impact spacecraft i am not going into all this the tail and uh, uh, and i want to uh, blow, uh, say something on this that when there are meteor showers one can see such kind of images even on your own dslr camera all that it needs is a dslr camera your normal 50 mm lens or if you have a camera with 18 mm lens keep it at 18 mm lens at f4.5 or so and you will be able to capture some meteor if it comes in the field of view of your camera so you will be able to catch such meteor showers too uh well uh, i i don't want to go into my details of what future work is uh, amritanshu i have to change now another set which i think i will finish it in 5 minutes sure so it has uh, actually been a very very exciting journey to the world of all the near earth objects that you have taken us to say meteorites where do the meteorites come from how where the meteorites actually are found how to find them over the earth and the impact and all so i would just uh, would uh, like to request you to kindly throw some light on one of more areas of your expertise say impact craters and especially the recovery of the meteorites over to you sir yeah uh i'm really happy to show you uh this particular meteorite uh, had happened in india not very far away from us now here i want to show you this was taken with an electron microscope one of the samples of our made uh, samples of the meteor uh, crushed meteor in the lonar lake and this is probably one of the images which we have not yet got for publication but as a interest what one can do in this kind of an object what we have done in edrf we have looked for iron now here we are looking for titanium 
that sample. Now this image is of titanium that you are finding it inside the meteor, lodar meteorite. And then I want to go further. You will see different colors. Here you will see different colors. It is silicon, titanium and iron. And finally, I want to show you one more image. Now this is only silicon, not the other elements. So the distribution is again very interesting. Only iron is there in this kind of a formation, what you saw in the earlier images. And again, I will repeat it myself. You can see silicon individually how it is placed inside the medium. Just in EDRA, electron diffraction microscope, you can get this as a resolution. Yes, this part of the work has been uh, spoken at the Morocco meeting where we have shown such images and one part of it have been shown in Hungary also. That's why I'm trying to show you these images. So you can see how silicon titanium iron we have been able to find in this particular uh, meteorite. And why do we call it meteorite? If you see, the crystallization is slightly different for each element here. And depending on the surface, which you will see here, which is only titanium, and then this is how it was. So this is one of the images which I thought I will share with you. And the last image is the one when we went to, behind us is Lonar Crater. And we have done Lonar Crater twice. Uh, observation from Lonar Crater twice. And what the result I showed you was a part of Lonar Crater. Uh, unfortunately, in India and outside India, we talk less about lunar crater. Uh, should I continue or I am supposed to stop? No, uh, that is, uh, I would just request you to sum up your experience yeah. regarding yeah. the yeah. in the so yeah. that we can move on to the final concluding remarks. Yeah, so this is how at Akash Ganga Center of uh, for Astronomy, we conduct such missions from 2003 and prior to that also to Lonar and however we will be looking for uh, volunteers to come and work with us for other craters also. In India we have four craters and the fourth crater, uh, one of that is Lonar, the second one is called as Ramgar and Dhala and the fourth is Luna. Now, this was done in 2011. 2015, I have not been able to recover the picture. 2015, we had been to Matanu Mud and Luna Crater. Now, Luna Crater is very, very old. It belongs to the Vedic times. And there, we have collected a good samples of it and they are still in the process of getting analyzed. And here, again, we want to make a common announcement that at AGCA, uh, we are actually into studying meteorites and its chemical properties. We are also trying to find out ages using such meteorites in uh, using newer techniques for observing such kind of meteorites. I think I will conclude here and we I would suggest you to look at our website called www.agc-astro.org where you can find many details and we are also in the process of upgrading our pages and giving you the latest what is now being done with Lonar Crater. So with these few things,
I want to stop here, and maybe can we have one or two small questions? Uh, sure, sir. Uh, actually, uh, as a concluding remark, uh, or probably before that, I would just would like to ask you a question that has been talked time and again. What is the entire purpose of this meteorite search, or you can say, in fact, meteorite research? Over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, according to the Indian content, uh, we are working. Also, you are aware of that we are also working on the meteorites which have fallen in India. Uh, right from the times uh, I can, could not go down to the Vedic era, but definitely. From the uh, later part, which is from the Mughal era, till date, we have been looking for meteorites in the country itself. And like any other disaster, let us hope there is no such asteroidal disaster in India because it can uh, be such a catastrophic, the large meteorites do come, meteors do come, then it can form a crater like this, which you see in the background. Now, this kind of uh, events do, here nobody knows what happened when that asteroid came and hit Lodar in Buldana in Maharashtra. Similarly, it fell in Rangad. Similarly, it fell in Dhala. So, meteorite is not a subject which only you can enjoy it by seeing it, yes, but then you can understand that what all these asteroids are made up of. Today, we also have a good amount of technology to either push away the uh, asteroid, we do have technology to burst the asteroid also in, uh, in the space, but Prior to that, it is also very important to know where these asteroids come from. So we are also in the process of developing a system where we should have to we should be able to detect such asteroids which are called as near Earth asteroids, which come less than the distance between the Earth and Moon, which is about Earth Moon distance. Uh, which is around 3 lakh 25 26000 kilometers if any object comes within that we should be able to detect even from our, our it has to happen all over the country because after see we are used to having disasters first and then we look for the precautions then we start looking for what kind of lockdown? So here, as we have been good enough in lockdowns, we have to be good enough in asteroid impact impacts also. So this is my good message to all our friends who are interested in meteors, meteorites, and asteroids. So thank you, sir. So now uh, I would just request you to make a quick concluding remarks regarding the challenges that lie ahead in the field of astronomy for astronomers, especially amateurs. Over to you, sir. Yeah. My concluding remark is the following, that now with the cameras, with the detecting devices, most astronomy has come to your laptops, your desktops, and even on your Androids, and probably on uh, your other systems. So. Astronomy, what it used to be earlier, now has broken down to every citizen level. It is not prerogative that only people in big institutes can do big science. No, you are also capable of doing this particular exercise, which we are trying to promote at Akash Ganga or AGCA. So my only concluding remark is we do need volunteers, citizen scientists, amateur astronomers to get into this format of astronomy. Because there is a, so many satellites are up there. So much of that data is coming. 
what are we going to do with and all that data don't be under this impression that it is not available on the internet everything is available today on internet one need not only look out or maybe only uh, institutions which are doing astronomy now all this has come to your desktop and fortunately slowly the institutions are opening up their newer technologies to agca also i am thankful to all our uh, patrons from such institutions who have been helping us maybe it is iit maybe it is uh, brc any institutions that we have approached they have been so kind and helpful to our groups of citizen scientists amateur astronomers and young students and here i want to thank amrutanshu to you for giving me such a patient hearing thank you sir thanks a lot i extend a very warm thanks on behalf of all the audience who have uh, been listening to you ever since the talk has just started and thanks a lot especially to the scientific knowledge for youth foundation platform which has lent me its platform to conduct this month's talk on perspective with amritanshu bajpay and really uh, as a summary for today's talk uh, given by dr adur uh, i would just like to uh, tell to the dear audience that yes planetary evolution is really a subset of a larger category of the physical evolution which in itself is a part of the grand scenario of the cosmic evolution so all the solar system bodies the planets satellites meteors meteorites and all they show an extraordinary diversity in their physical aspects and properties and in a way in some one manner or the other they have been interlinked or intertwined in the mannerism of the stellar evolution so these asteroids these meteorites these meteor showers and all they are not only a delight for amateur astronomers to watch but they also offer a serious scope of research in fact their search the scope of the search offers a serious scope of research with this note i would just like to take the leave of the audience for the day and thanks for giving a patient hearing a special thanks to dr bharat adur the speaker of the day and also not to forget the man behind the curtains mr sumit kumar shivastav who has lent me the platform of scientific knowledge of you to conduct this today's talk perspective on behalf of the ignited minds science witnet club thank you thanks a lot and we shall be back with you in sooner uh, another uh, episode with one of the uh, another uh, dignitaries in the field of astronomy and the people who have really served the nation and the entire human race with their work over astronomy and the physical sciences so with these words i would just like to extend a very warm message of stay safe stay home and stay healthy in the ongoing corona pandemic thank you thanks a lot good night